Hello and welcome back to another Empire War video. Today we're with the Age of Legends series of mods developed by Story Underscore Continues. Now we have tried out one of his new Empire War mods called the Rise of Cadus that will be coming out in the year 2022. But today we're actually playing the new Jedi Order mod. So why are we playing this mod that came out a couple of months if not a couple of years ago? Well, not only this mod, but the other series of mods that came before it, the Triumph of Rebellion, Dark Empire Rising, and the Tales of the New Republic, which you can see in the bottom of the screen there, have all had major updates, which allow you to play with friends in skirmish mode. Now, the multiplayer Galactic Conquest has been removed in most Empire War mods because of the instability that comes with it, but in this mod, you can go against your own friends with your own factions that you might like in the series of mods. So why is that actually so interesting? Every other Empire War mod has skirmish mode built into it. Awaken Rebellion, Thrawn's Revenge has multiple skirmish modes. So why is this any different? Well, it's coming down to the factions that you can play. Some factions in these series of mods are relatively uncommon in Empire War. So if we go into single player and space skirmish, we can actually see the series of factions you can play. Ones like Yuzhong Vong, Huts, the SSI Ruvi Imperium, the Vagri Empire, which are from the unknown regions, are relatively uncommon and not well known across other Empire War mods. Now, yes, you do have Yuzhong Vong at war, for example, which is skirmish mode built around that faction. But in these series of mods, there's so many factions you can try out that are era specific that it might be of interest to you. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at some of these uncommon factions you can play and see what ships you can build in these skirmish verses. So without further ado, I'm gonna be playing as Yu Zhong Vong. The enemies are gonna be playing as the Huts. We're gonna keep our starting credits at about 2000 because believe it or not, in this mod, easy AI is not easy. I've had my ass whooped by these guys a few times off camera. So without further ado, let's jump right into our first battle. Now, for the purposes of today's video, I don't have somebody to join me on a skirmish match here. So we are going to be going against the AI, but rest assured, you can actually play against your friends. So with the Yuzhong Vong, what I've seen with the ships that you can build, you've got some here that are, the, uh, for example, the Yorick Grutter. Again, apologies if I don't say these names right. Vong, I'm not well versed with the, the naming conventions. You've got like ones that are built for uh, versus capital ships like bombers. And then you also have the Yorick Et, Et or whatever it's called, which has obviously the strength of a TIE Defender, but also has the speed and performance of an A-Wing. And then you also have some special ships like the Umfalha, I hope I'm saying that right, which um, is actually a pretty good anti-fighter, but also has a uh, shield leech ability, which is quite interesting. Uh, so, in my opinion, I think the Yuzhong Vong is probably going to be very effective with its fighters rather than its capital ships in most cases. Now, as I said, we are playing against easy AI and they're certainly not going to make it easy for me whatsoever. Hopefully I can build on this before they actually... No, they're going to actually stop me from uh, capping my, uh, my first asteroid here, which is really frustrating. Um, one thing to also note with the Yuzhong Vong is that um, I think many ships don't actually have shields. I think it's just health only, which is uh, quite an interesting um, ability if you think about it. Uh, very different from most other factions that you play that usually come with shielding abilities and whatnot. So here I'm... Oh, I actually won that uh, fight. See, like as I said, the Yuzhong Vong really come out on top when it comes to uh, fighters. Which I think is going to be paramount in winning uh, against, believe it or not, easy AI, right? Bit of shameful to say that. Um, there's also some other things. The reason why you play a mod map here instead of the base uh, maps, you wouldn't want to play any of the base maps anyway, is that we also see some of these bigger platform stations compared to the others. This isn't a perspective difference. This one is actually bigger. Um, and we also have one right over here as well, which we'll use. These are uh, different from what you can build, which is the turbo laser and all, all of the other standard orbital uh, defense units you can build. These are actually quite different and are faction specific. So we've actually got, what is this? Mako, Mako, you want to pronounce him coming in. I don't think we're going to be able to take this guy on with just these two. But uh, let's actually go ahead and just, you know, distract him anyway. We built these uh, two asteroids up. We're fine. 
And then hopefully we'll build this third one next. Uh, there we go. And then we're going to go over to this defense platform over here. Uh, I, maybe, so the fight, we've got some strong fighters. I'm not worried about the fight count. I'm more worried about whatever uh, significantly larger ships they build. That's my, my worry. Because uh, easy AI, I just don't know why, but are just able to build so much faster than I am. And I, I don't know why, even though I've restricted income. Um, yeah, you see, we're doing pretty much no damage to the shielding here. Uh, but if we go over to this uh, defense unit, I'm going to pause here just so I can show you. These are era specific. So we've got a uh, Peace Brigade X7 base, which allows you to build specific um, units and heroes that probably don't go above fighters and some, you know, anti-fighter uh, frigates. Uh, we also have the... The Yelzen Republic XQ-1, a moderately armed defense station that provides access to the, uh, I'm going to pronounce these wrong, uh, to specific units and a modest income. And then uh, you've got the Yorick Defense Crib, continuously spawns coral skippers until destroyed, can construct coral skippers, uh, bombers, and elite slayer fighters. So these are actually a fair bit different um, than, you know, when I was playing the Huts earlier on. Uh, I think the Huts have a probably better better options than the, the Yuzhong Vong. And I, I'm worried that the Yuzhong Vong might be a little bit underpowered. Um, it all really comes down to methods of play, really, isn't it? So here we have the Suval Ban. Uh, this seems to be a pretty midway um, frigate or uh, ship, uh, which is dealing a fair amount of damage here. This one here, which is more of like a anti-fighter, isn't doing too much damage and neither of neither of our fighters have been doing much shield damage but what we have here is that i think we'll be able to utilize the shield leech ability here which um pretty much reduces the enemy shields um even with it trying to regenerate while we're actually firing upon it um so now we finally stripped the shields uh this is what i mean by like how difficult it is for early game uh, against easy AI. Uh, I've also built this little station here that can build specific, um, you know, specialized fighters. But right now, I don't think it's, you know, that much of a benefit right now. I'm going to tech up and I'm going to keep teching up till uh, tech level five just to see what ships are available and then we'll move on to the next faction. Right, so we're back. I took some time just to build up some credits and tech up to the final tech level. And we can see we start unlocking some big boy uh, heroes here. I've already got a War Master, uh, Tazvong. Um, and then we also are building uh, Krom Kash. There is some other interesting ships here, like the, the, the Core Chok. I'm, I'm sorry if Nancy's wrong. And some interesting stuff about this is Star Dreadnought at the same level as a Bellator class Super Star Destroyer. So it makes me wonder it, um, just how big do ships get in skirmish mode? Because... I've always liked uh, the idea of having a uh, Super Star Destroyer in skirmish mode. And Thrawn's Revenge does do it in some capacity as well. Um, I'm having to play now because our base is so weak. There's no, never any shielding, so all damage is permanent. So I've had to jump in right now. I have built a, a popular ship, uh, Mid-Rock. Uh, pretty much just an Imperial 2 Star Destroyer equivalent. Um... So let's go ahead and drop this in now. Look at this. This is a big boy ship. Let's see how this looks. Coming right in. See, look how fast I'm losing, like, uh, health. And then there you go. <laughs> so I guess we're going to just have to pause and have a look at this ship here. That's so annoying that we get wiped out just by... And that was really quick as well by a few bombers. Uh... It feels like uh, the Yuzhong Vong, whilst have some like really strong abilities, like the shield leeching, um, uh, uh, the Midrock here has that ability as well, and all the anti-fighters too, the shield leech is, is quite strong. So if you can, you know, stack those up with multiple ships in your faction, really, really worth it. Um, and then what abilities do we... Oh, we have the exact same here as well. You also have the ability to draw in firepower um use gravity well uh generators the, the equivalent of but to draw the firepower to you so the enemies will fire upon you instead should have probably used it with this ship so i wouldn't have lost but 
it's a, it's a relatively new ability that I'm not uh, that I'm not accustomed to. I haven't seen any factions use something like that. Um, and then here I just built loads and loads of fighters. The fighters are superior to whatever the huts had for sure. Um, so yeah, it seems like the weakness is that your base is so weak. There's no shield regeneration for the Yuzhong Vong. Something to take note of. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, this is. I'm going to wrap it up here because it took me a while to get to tech level 5. And it has definitely been one of these games where I've been able to beat the easy AI. Um, just with a faction that I'm not familiar with. So uh, I think we'll have to wrap it up here on the uh, Yuzhong Vong. And we'll move on to the next faction. But other interesting things that we see... Uh, with ships like this is that we also have uh, we also see the traits that these heroes bring i think they work in skirmish but for the war master uh vong we see that the increases fleet damage across the all of our ships by 25 percent i believe uh, and then this one i don't think has any uh traits or anything it really comes down to the heroes uh, does this guy have any no he doesn't it's just a empowered fighter squadron okay well there you go that is vong we're going to jump to Hearts and then see the other factions as well. Uh, see if there's anything interesting to check out there. But there you go. We have been defeated, unfortunately. But uh, moving on. Welcome back. We are now playing as the Hearts. I've teched up to tech level 5. I've pretty much gained full control of the map here. And um, in terms of the big capture points, we have the uh, x7 factory we have the orbital hyper velocity gun that's quite interesting i'll come back to that in a second and the one that i built earlier was the xq1 which is pretty much here it's just another asteroid that gives you more income with the ability to build some other ships and uh and some other little special uh, hero ships that you might not be able to build on your uh hangar here or shipyard sorry and uh Yes, yeah, so what we're going to build here is we're going to build the Orbital Hyper Velocity Gun. I saw this in the Rise to, uh, of Cadus mod, and this was really interesting. This does a large amount of damage over time onto capital ships and, and whatnot. Seems like the AI is not going to build any because I've pretty much taken control of everything. Uh, if they do take control of one asteroid, I'll allow them to see if they'll build anything interesting. But alongside that, I've also built some of the bigger um, hero ships here. So we've got uh, Borg of the Heart. I love that profile pip, uh, picture they used for him. That, that's beautiful. That is definitely something I'd take for my Facebook page or something. And then Durg of the Heart. Um, also to note here, uh, the traits here are increased health and shield by 10%. And then uh, boosts fleet health damage and shields by 10%. I'm wondering, is this? Yeah, no, that's for both. Okay. So that's throughout all ships that you build, I'm assuming. But the most interesting thing is the Dark Saber we've got here. Now, let me quickly pause this. The Dark Saber is uh, a battle station based on the original Death Star plan stolen from the Imperial Information Center. It was designed by Bevel Lemisk uh, for Durga the Hut and stripped of all extra uh, features and systems from secondary weapons, yada yada. Essentially, the Dark Saber can destroy planets or capital ships in a single shot. So I definitely want to... Oh my god, this thing is huge! By the way, this is like first time for me uh, with this uh, with this mod. So a lot of these things you probably have already seen that I haven't. That is massive. And we've got this. This is pretty much what we're building already. This is essentially just a massive hangar. It uh, doesn't do too much damage, but you get the whole drill. Like It's just like a Luca Hulk, if you will. Um, and then we've also got this ship here. Which looks pretty good. It's like a very Halo-esque ship. Halo ships, I always find, just look like massive guns in space. The uh, the Boffin Assault Cruiser by the New Republic being one of them. Let's see if we can just try and find a way of dragging this guy in. I don't think we can, you know. Is it that big that we can't get it into the map? No. Surely not. Is there no way for me to be able to put this down? You get a weird perspective shift when I move this around the map as well. No, surely we must be able to. I'll tell you what, let's try and get a, a fighter over here so we get some uh, some extra um, space to deploy. Here we can see the hypervelocity gun just going crazy on these fighters. Now, I don't know if it's accurate. I want to see if it will fire again. Come on. 
Fire again, please. You got aim. You got aim. Fire. No. It seems like it's it just can't get a perfect aim on the fire. I'm not surprised. And then the uh the laser defense system is gonna take out that single fire. Right. Can we bit drop this now? See, it's weird because I don't know if I need to drop it where the hand is or where the ship is. That's what I'm getting uh, uh, mixed up on. Let me try and bring another fighter in. I just need as much space as possible. Uh, I really want to see what this ship can do, you know? Oh, I missed the, I missed the firing of the high-velocity gun again. Uh, no, that's not going to Oh, there you go. So, yeah, it can definitely miss. Like most hypervelocity guns, it can miss. So, any luck now? Any luck now? No? Man, this seems like it's really impossible to put down, huh? That's right. Let's put this guy down first. Yeah, see, look. Maybe we can try and squeeze it in here. because It's pretty difficult to place it anywhere else. But, uh, yeah, so... Here, I mean, we've got a lot of heavy turbo lasers, but it's just essentially a... Uh, a, a huge carrier um and then if we drop this bad boy over here and then finally can we try and get this guy anywhere please no that doesn't seem like it's gonna happen i would have loved to have seen this ship in action maybe if i've got time i'll just put a clip here of me finally being able to put it down on a map that doesn't have enough crap around it um but yeah Either way, let's go ahead and uh, finish the game here. Maybe I'm going to still try. Uh, these ships are slow, so hopefully it will give us enough time to try and find a place to put it. Gosh. I, I've never seen a ship this big in Skirmish, honestly. You know, we're just rinsing them. I find that the huts benefit a lot from an early game and like a money lead. Uh, those XQ1, um, those XQ1 uh, platforms are pretty good at um, are pretty good at uh, generating cash really quickly. Um, in my experience, compared to the Yuzhong Vong, where you know fighters take precedent and then and then shield draining afterwards with uh, some of your capital ships. Because uh, Yu Zhong Vong probably don't seem like they would win in terms of like raw power, while like the huts gain power by having just an overwhelming credit superiority in the late game compared to you know the enemy team. So that's the huts. Some interesting ships in tech level five, uh, or well, tech level four. It only goes up to tech level four, not tech level five in some Empire War mods. But uh, the Huts didn't seem to have as many big heroes that make a big difference. Those were the only two, along with the Dark Saber, uh, which was 50,000 credits and took ages to build as well. So maybe, you know, like I mentioned in uh, uh, Yodin mod, Yodin mod had a thing with the Empire where you would just play safe for as long as possible because your ships weren't as strong as other factions. You keep playing defensive, and then you eventually build the Death Star, which would just one-shot kill the enemy team. So it's all about stalling the game as long as possible. Maybe the huts are the same on this faction. Um, so yeah, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and move on to some of the new uh, the new Jedi Order um, specific era factions. So moving on to the Seer Ruby Imperium, there tends to be not as much to build on tech level 4, compared to other factions at least in terms of credit uh, uh, amounts now this seems to be a early game faction with no real late game carry we have ships like the carrot cruiser which actually do a lot of damage on the early game that you only need like tech level two i believe or even one to build it but besides that as soon as you hit tech level four nothing even exceeds beyond ten thousand credits what i do like though is obviously you got three sets of fighters here. Usually you have your bombers, your interceptors, your fighters, etc. etc. But here instead, you've got like a battle droid, you've got a V set, which is ran or piloted by an actual C Ru. Uh, and then you've got a shadow droid, which is piloted by an organic brain implanted into the ship. Very curious and very interesting indeed. They tend to be the most expensive fighters of the lot, and I think they're 
pretty much equivalent to a tie defender if not a bit more besides that uh the ships have some early game potential you've got the modular task force cruiser there for healing as well pretty good uh, but, uh, but beyond that they all follow the same ship design i also have our only single hero that you can build in terms of skirmish admiral if if kiss i'm oh, sorry I'm, I'm gonna i butchered that as you know but um, yeah so uh I, I picked this map as well not the greatest it's very dark it's very hard to see some of the ships so i'm kind of glad that i picked this map for uh, a faction that doesn't have that much to show for it but bringing this guy in here these are the type of ship designs that you're gonna probably be seeing uh, throughout this faction there's nothing really more than than this really uh there is one that i'm building uh called the uh watch keeper i'm gonna jump straight to that build right now which is the equivalent uh firepower of an isd2 uh but in a much smaller package so we'll definitely check that out um but yeah in so here we have increased fleet damage health and shield by 10 percent for this hero besides that nothing else you've got concentrated fire for an ability no shield draining no extra credits early game what i haven't checked though is what we can build on these bigger platforms hopefully we might have some more interesting ships we can build uh, uh from from these platforms and what we can actually build in our shipyard i swear to god if this ship really can't handle what it, okay no it's fine i was gonna say if that ship started losing a lot of shields i'll be like this this faction ain't it this faction is not it that seems to be holding out pretty well though there's like it's taken no damage which i'd expect it to be for one of the most expensive heroes but yeah anyway again not really that much we've got an uh an integument uh station moderately well-armed space station that provides modest income we can see the huts can build that and even the um sorry just the yuzhong vong can build that uh so it's pretty much the same and then we have an orbital hyper velocity gun um which is what i showed on the huts as well so really nothing too special i'm gonna build this one so i want to see if there's anything interesting i can build um as for this the watch keeper a pocket star destroyer used by the bakurians to defend their space from the sea ruvi or other threats the ship is built around the reactor of an isd2 giving it a lot more power for its small size it's a well shielded very fast at sublight and hyperspace speeds and carries two squadrons of starfighters so uh, and it looks like it can all it, from the last paragraph um, gravity well generators as well I'm assuming so let's have a quick look at this ship much smaller than our hero ship here um, but talking of which before I even check that out I'll also build the most expensive ship here I think these two ships are pretty much this ship design anyway so you're not really missing out on much but here we have the watch keeper which is if I zoom right in pretty much an ISD2 in terms of power but much smaller, much, much smaller. And this is a unique design for this faction, at least in skirmish mode. Um, whether or not it has a lot of power, we'll have to find out. ISD2, though, is relatively, rel upholds relatively well. Uh, and this hero ship here tends to be able to uphold a lot of damage. It's, a, it's definitely a sponge uh, and definitely for frontline. But... Yeah, it just seems like late game. It's just got nothing. Like, if I bring this in, it's pretty much the same ship, but not hero. You know? And I, I'm assuming the same hit points as well, yeah. So, maybe this seems to be, like, the type... Maybe, in my mind... Now, this is first impressions. Uh, this type of faction... Uh, uh, I keep forgetting the name. The, the, the C. Ruvi Imperium. It seems like a counter to the huts. Where, like, you want to save up 50,000 credits... To get that dark saber and then one shot the enemy team these guys seems to be able to counter that by having a strong early uh, and somewhat strong mid game uh with the ships that are available um and uh, maybe that's what i'm seeing maybe that, you know like in terms of rock paper scissors this faction has this feature that makes it strong against this but then this uh, this faction has this feature which is strong against that you get the whole drill what i'm trying to push here so really nothing too much to show in this faction so i'm not going to waste too much time here um i'm, I'm just going to move straight on to the final faction of the video really so i'll see you there so finally i wanted to show you a faction that perseveres throughout all of the age of legends empire war mods 
and in the new jedi order we're seeing the new republic in that era so these ships that we see that we can build on the shipyard is reflective to that so here we can see some ships here we've got the the republic uh, i'm not sure exactly i think that's the republic star destroyer maybe i'm not sure uh, the Immobilizer, we have the Victory One, very standard ships that date all the way back to the Clone Wars and all that uh, here. And uh, looking around on the more expensive side of things, the Mediator, we'll build one of those. What's over here? The Viscount. We can actually build the Viscount in uh, in Skirmish Mode. That's interesting. As for Heroes, oh, Monkey! And then alongside that, we also have uh, Booster Terek uh wedge antilles of course does he run he does run the lusankia can we actually build a lusankia in skirmish that's something i want to know that would be actually interesting in itself because i don't think any empire war mod outside of thrawn's revenge is um you know uh specific skirmish game modes that you can run you, you know uh uh, and Yodin, that you can run Super Star Destroyers. Yeah, of course, Yodin allows you to run all of them, don't they? Okay, we're back. We have the Mediator, we have the Viscount, and we have Wedge Antilles and the Lusankia. So, let's go ahead and pull out the Lusankia. That is a very small SSD. I can't seem to place it anywhere right now, which is annoying. Please tell me this is a map where I can place it down. Uh... If we're struggling with the uh, the Lusankia, then I think we'll definitely not be able to get the Vi count down. Let's try ahead and get the Vi count in. A bit bigger, but yeah, we're still having the same issue. Oh, okay, boom, we managed to get it in. Look at that. Hopefully, we can now find a way to squeeze the uh, the Lusankia in somewhere. Oh, there we go. Boom. Perfect. We got them both in. Lusaki is really small. That's the issue I'm getting here. Because in in FO, like in Thrawn's Revenge, uh, and even Remake, they pull the camera out. The scale is much smaller to the point where you don't even see, uh, you know, staff fighters or anything like that. It's that small. But Lusaki is not that big, you know, uh, which is a bit of a surprise. I mean, if we take a look at this planet to scale, then maybe. But, um, but yeah, in terms of game size, quite small. Quite small. That is impressive. And then we got the Viscount here, which is much bigger. Um, actually, doesn't look half bad, does it? I think that might be a good screenshot, too. You know? Let me see if I can't get that uh, loose sanctuary uh, in. Can you, can you move this way, bud? Let's see if I can't get you... See if I can't get you facing this way. There we go. Now that is a thumbnail and a half. I like that. Definitely nice. Definitely nice. But old models for sure. And I, I think they're, they're um, not created for the purpose of this mod. Which makes sense, you know, because it's only been made by one person. But yeah, so these are era specific to this faction. Uh, um, I mean, Viscount, pretty much New Jedi Order essentially. And you wouldn't have that in other mods, I'm assuming uh of the age of legends um uh series of mods so that's something uh, uh you might find interesting with the new republic because you can play that faction pretty much anywhere uh but and and last but not least we have the mediator here nice skybox too i actually quite like this one it's just very dark to see any issue but yeah there you go so these are the factions you can play in I think like four, five Empire War mods that now have multiplayer skirmish. So if you've enjoyed these series of mods, play it with a friend, go head to head, see who's better. I personally like skirmish a lot more than Galactic Conquest, believe it or not. Um, that's just me as uh, a player. I like to go head to head with other people rather than play the campaign. But yeah, besides that, guys, this is a look, first look at the new update coming to all of the Age of Legends Empire War Mods. And other than that, guys, I've been Charlie. You've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.